Hey everybody, it's Nick from Sonic Tone Amps. In today's video, we're going to go over negative feedback and what it does to shape the sound of an amplifier. From a high level broad sense, negative feedback is merely a tool in the toolbox to help us fine tune an amp towards the end of the line, usually around the power amp section of the circuit. What it does is if an amp is on the verge of instability, we can inject negative feedback to help calm the amp down, tighten it up. It extends and flattens the frequency response and makes it a smoother, more stable sounding amp. What we have here is a very basic and simple block diagram of an amplifier, starting with the input from the guitar into the preamp and EQ section, into the power amp, into the output transformer, and finally out through the speaker. It's important to note that if you were to use a scope to visually analyze the sound wave going through the amplifier, if you looked at it at the point coming off the transformer into the speaker, it would be out of phase with the signal back at the point going into the power amp. And this is important because this is how negative feedback works. We are taking an out of phase signal coming off the secondary of the output transformer and combining it into the signal going into the power amp. It is extending and flattening the frequency response, reducing unwanted distortion in the power amp, and generally making the amp a little tighter and smoother overall. The negative feedback resistor and its value is what controls how much negative feedback gets injected back into the power amp. And there are a lot of different ways this is implemented, and there are different features that are available on certain amplifiers that allow the player to control this. It may be a switch that switches between two different resistor values. It may be a switch that switches between a negative feedback resistor or disconnects the negative feedback on the other side of the switch so that you can have an option of having negative feedback or having no negative feedback. Or it could be a potentiometer that allows the user to fine tune the exact amount of negative feedback they want. So here we are with the half pint again. It does have a negative feedback switch. All sonic tone amps that have a negative feedback switch, they're labeled punchy or smooth. To be honest, it's the best thing I could think of that I thought maybe it would explain to a layperson what the switch does to the sound of the amp. In the punchy setting, it's using less negative feedback, so the amp is a little more punchy and aggressive sounding. In the smooth setting, it's using more negative feedback, so the amp is a little smoother and a little less aggressive. So anyway, we're going to do uh, a couple of passages here on clean line and on distortion, both each using uh, both settings, and we'll get to hopefully hear how it sounds in the video, and you can make a decision which one you like better. So here we go. We're going to start with the clean line on the smooth setting, so more negative feedback. <laughs> All right, so let's do the same thing on the distortion channel. We're going to start on the smooth setting on channel two. Here we go.
that's it for the differences between negative feedback with the punchy setting with less negative feedback and the smooth setting with more negative feedback. I hope you could hear the differences on the video there. I definitely definitely feel like I could hear and feel the difference here in the room as I was playing on the punchy setting, particularly on the clean line. It was much more punchy and aggressive. And then on the smooth setting, it was a little more well-rounded and slightly less aggressive. Uh, so there you have it. So that's it on the topic of negative feedback. I hope this video helped you understand what it is and what it does to the sound of the amp. And I hope you come back and check out more videos as we produce them here on our YouTube channel. Thanks for watching and we'll see you soon.